Starting with version 14.2, Oxygen offers full support for XML Schema 1.1. XML Schema 1.1 is a superset of XML Schema 1.0 and offers lots of new powerful capabilities. The important additions in XML Schema 1.1 are Assertions allow you to specify additional constraints using XPath 2.0 expressions. This is an idea similar with the Schematron schema. Then, conditional type assignments allow you to specify the type of an element based on the values of its attributes. Open content allows elements not explicitly mentioned in the content model to appear in the document instance. It is as if wildcards were automatically inserted at appropriate points within the content model. Override, which replaces the XML Schema 1.0 redefine mechanism. Default attributes, used for specifying a set of attributes that apply to every complex type in an XML Schema document. Negative wildcards, a mechanism to specify exceptions for wildcards. What namespaces or Qualified names are not allowed. All group. The all element has been enhanced to allow elements with multiple occurrences. Also, all element can have the wildcards at any child position. Substitute multiple elements. The substitution group capability has been enhanced so that an element can substitute multiple elements. Oxygen XML improved all the XML schema features and capabilities to support the new XML schema 1.1. XML schema validation and content completion, XML document validation and content completion, schema design mode, resource hierarchy dependencies and refactoring actions, the model view, the XML schema documentation, and the XML instance generator. To highlight the XML Schema 1.1 features in action, we will edit an XML Schema of a purchase order XML document. First, let's see how the XML structure looks like. Our XML document contains the shipping and billing information in two similarly structured elements, Ship2 and Bill2. Then, the Items element is a sequence of item elements which store information about the purchased products, name, quantity, and price. Now, let's take a look at the associated XML schema. When you open an XML schema document, an information message tells us that, by default, the XML schema support is set to version 1.1. We can continue using version 1.1 or just switch back to version 1.0. We'll choose XML schema version 1.1. If at a later time we change our mind, we can set the XML schema version in the Oxygen Preferences page. Now, going back to our schema, we can see that it defines a purchase order which contains a list of items. Each item contains quantity and price information. We'll introduce some of the newly added features by focusing on specific use cases. First, we want to ensure that the value of the purchase order is higher than $50. To do this, we can add an assert constraint on the items element by dragging the assert component from the palette view and drop it over the items element. Then, we set the assertion test attribute. To see how this affects an XML instance, we can validate an XML file using this XML schema. The XML file is not valid because it does not comply with the assertion constraint. See that the total value of the invoice is 30 plus 15, which is less than the minimum of $50. Now, if we change the quantity of one of the items to 3, then the validation is successful. Another use of the new XML Schema 1.1 features is when we need to have elements with alternative types. In our purchase order document, the Ship2 and Build2 elements have generic address types. Our customers are located in different countries and, in order to process the PO, 
we need different billing and shipping information specific to each country. Now we'll add an alternative type for ship to element by dragging the type alternative component from the palette view and dropping it over the ship to element. Since we want to create an alternative type for UK addresses, we'll set the type to an already created UK address and the test attribute value to country equals UK. Similarly, we'll add another type alternative with the type US address and the test country equals US. We'll copy the type alternative element and paste it in the build to element. Now, depending on the value of the country attribute, the element will have a different type. Now we'll switch to the XML document and set the country attribute for the ship to element. Note that the content completion assistant is triggered when we edit the element. We insert the country attribute and choose the UK value. Now the document becomes invalid because it lacks the postcode information. We insert the required element, but now the validation fails because one of the elements is still missing. After inserting the export code information, the document becomes valid. Now we can move to the build to element, but this time We'll set the country attribute to US. Now the document becomes invalid again because the US address requires additional information. First, we add the state element, then the zip code. Note that the document becomes valid. Now, moving to the next use case. We want to relax a bit the restrictions imposed on the address types to allow us to input new elements like phone number or email address. So here we can use another XML schema 1.1 feature, the open content wildcard. This means that we can declare the content of the address type as open. Now we'll drag the open content wildcard and drop it in the address element. Since we want to be able to insert additional content anywhere in the address element, we set the open content mode as interleave. Also, we want to allow only elements from other namespaces than the target namespace. This is specified with a negative wildcard. We set the process contents attribute to allow inserting also elements that are not declared in the schema. Now, switching to the XML document, we insert two new elements, email and phone number, from a namespace different than the target namespace. We already defined this namespace to accommodate any new elements we might want to add in the XML document. Note that the document is still valid even if the elements we inserted are not declared in any XML schema. Going back to the schema file, the documentation support was updated to accommodate the new elements of XML schema 1.1. We will generate the documentation for our XML schema document with default settings. and we can see the HTML document open in a web browser. Note the assert constraint documentation and the open content and type alternatives documentation. The type alternatives documentation lists all defined alternatives in a tabular form. 
the default alternative type is the last one in the table. The XML instance generator can also handle the XML schema 1.1 features. We will generate a sample XML instance from the purchase order schema. Select the purchase order XSD file, set purchase order as root element, set the default namespace to no namespace, then we can generate the XML instance. Note that the address type elements conform with the selected alternative type which is UK address. Random elements are generated between the child elements of address type elements to conform with the open content constraint. And this concludes our demonstration. Thanks for watching.